Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm sure by the, you know, at this time, you guys are all, um, sorry. Um, are you guys seeing my presenter screen or the other one? You guys? Um, sort of your presenter screen, but I see all the other ones at the bottom. There we go. Okay, perfect. Um, so, um, I'm sure you've been, you know, bombarded all day with, with, with lots of interesting fun research. So I'll, I'll keep this short as well. Um, so right, Ghani, I am, um, so you've been here about a year. It feels like I just came, uh, almost a year. Um, and the type of problems I, I work on kind of span intersection of machine learning and kind of social impact and public policy. So I'm actually 50% in machine learning and 50% in Heinz College, which is the public policy school. And here are kind of examples of, of things that, that the domains, the problem areas that, that, that I've been working on for the last several years, um, um, looking at lead poisoning in kids and understanding how do we reduce lead poisoning by proactively targeting home inspections for lead hazards. Um, a lot of work in policing to unfortunately try to reduce the horrible things that police officers are doing by under predicting who might be doing those things and, and trying to stop that before that happens. Improving educational outcomes by understanding students who might be at risk of not graduating high school and connecting them with programs. Reducing jail recidivism by looking at who might need mental health services and at risk of recidivism um, and connecting that together. Um, uh, improving vaccination rates. Uh, this is a pro recent project in Mexico by understanding why a child may not get vaccinated and allocating proactive outreach efforts. Right? So in all of these types of problems, there are kind of components of understanding what's going on, predicting who might be at risk of some sort of adverse behavior, and then connecting with interventions to figure out how do we reduce that risk, right? It, it's kind of the whole systems piece of, the goal is to improve something, the goal is not to predict and watch things, bad things happen, uh, because that's useless for, for everyone, except for the ROC curve that you might be able to produce based on that. Right? So, the, so the meta research question that, that kind of a lot of my work focus on, focuses on is really, um, how do we build AI human collaborative systems um, to tackle social and policy problems that are able to kind of explicitly and reliably achieve fair and equitable outcomes. And so there are three kind of key pieces here. Right? The first piece is all the examples, all the projects that I'm doing, they're not autonomous decision-making systems. They are combining machine learning and humans. And they're really primarily human systems where machine learning is supposed to help improve something, right? So then sort of look at areas like HCI and being able to, the research question becomes how do we adapt based on human feedback? How do we make them explainable and interpretable? And how do we then, you know, really figure out how do we get feedback more than just getting labels? Um, and how do we improve not just the model, but the overall system at the explainability level? So there's a lot of work that we're doing right now on explainability and interpretability at the systems level. So how do we improve um, not explain the model better, but human plus explanation or the algorithm plus the explanation improves the decisions of the humans uh, as opposed to um, just being able to explain something better. So that's one area. The other area has been around sort of how do we make these systems fair and equitable? And again, thinking about it at the outcomes level uh, of how do we upfront define the metrics when we're scoping the problem? Um, how do we define equity? Um, how do we measure fair bias and fairness? And then how do we trade off um, if there is a trade off in this, in this area? Um, so for example, some of the things that we've been looking at here is for some, for these projects, how do we build a system that's fair and equitable? And one of the interesting recent results we've found that we're, uh, it's not published yet, but ha has been people assume that there is sort of some sort of a trade off between accuracy and, and bias, and we're finding in many real problems, um, certain class of problems, there's actually no empirical trade-off. You can, you can achieve the same level of performance without given um, um, and reduce bias significantly. Um, so there's some work there. And then a lot of work on sort of how do we know that in the real world with the world changing, 
how do we make sure that we can explicitly focus on these outcomes and make sure that they continue to happen over time? So what is the validation methodology for machine learning models that is robust to changes over time? Um, and how do we make these models more resilient, not just in the, the, again, the accuracy world that we may live in, but also in the fairness and equity world. It's not enough to sort of build a model that's fair today how do we make sure it continues? What does generalization over time look like for fairness, uh, for stability, for interpretability, in addition to kind of the, 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 the accuracy focus that, that, that we have? Um, and so there are three concrete kind of research areas here. One is on bias and fairness. Uh, an example of what I talked about was kind of looking at trade-offs and finding that we developed some methods where there, we can actually not, don't need to trade off, we can get both a lot of interpretability work on looking at existing methods to see uh, how can we use those methods to improve the performance of systems. Um, and then third is sort of really focusing on specific ML methods that are useful in tackling societal problems, such as sort of experimental design methods, um, a lot of these sort of precision at top K type uh, metrics that, that, that come up more in, in, in public policy problems, how do we design uh, ML methods for that? So that's a, that's a very quick overview. As a side, just sort of for people to, to know if you're working on projects, um, I have also have access to a lot of partnerships with governments and nonprofits which come with data problems and people who understand the data and the problem. So uh, if you're interested in, you know, you have, you're working on an area and you think, I really wanna uh, motivate it and test it and use it on a real problem, feel free to come talk to me. I probably have access to something that I can, I can connect you with. Um, so yeah, happy to, happy to take questions. Um, and then for those of you who want to contact me afterwards, you know, pretty simple email. So, yeah, thanks.